for the sake of people who are watching right now, like through the video, let me just repeat it one more time. Compound angle formulas, uh, we are learning how to get, use these formulas on the left. The thing on the right, do not worry about. I am providing it for you because it exists and you can use it if you want. And we're gonna practice using it here, but on a test, I will not ask you for tangent stuff because it's not on your formula sheet. All right, let's take a look. Angles, 15, 75, and 105 are angles we can create when we combine 30, 45, and 60 in different ways. We can also combine 60 plus 30, which is 90 degrees, but we already know 90 degrees. 60 minus 30 is 30 degrees, and we also already know 30 degrees. So I am going to investigate sine, cosine, and tangent using the three different angles. Let's take a look. Sine of 15. What is 15? Well, we can rewrite 15 as a combination of 45 and 30. And so we do. If you know what angle A is, and we know what angle B is, we are going to plug in these angles according to the pattern, sine, cos, cosine. If the question says sine of an addition of two angles, it's gonna be sine, cos, cosine, and the angles will alternate. You may also recognize that if the angles are added, the two terms we write also add. If it so happens the angles are subtracting, the two terms that we write are subtracting. That is sine. Okay? Please note, some interesting errors also occur when people are using compound angle formulas. When I have, for example, sine 45 plus 30, some people think that you can just split the 45 and 30 and say this is equal to sine 45 plus sine 30. That is not true. Please, please be careful not to make this silly mistake. 45 plus 30 is a lot more complicated than sine 45 plus sine 30. Okay, let's do it. 45, 30. Sine cos, cosine. Sine A, cos B, cos A, sine B, and everything else then is special triangles. That's it. Yes? For like our unit test, do we get a calculator? Mm -hmm. So, like, if this was on a unit test, can we just plug in like 45 plus 30 minus 40? Or are you looking for the intermediate steps of, like, making it into a step If you plug in sine 15 and just give me that, um, I would question how you got that. No, I mean, like, like you plug it all into the formula. Uh -huh. This is the third step. Right here? No, I'll plug that. This, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Did you not plug that into your calculator and then get the same answer? You're asking, can I just put this into my calculator and right away get this? If your calculator can do that, I mean, I suppose that would be quote unquote acceptable, but I do want to see you use your special triangles. It's important. Yes. I think I have like a problem here. Curveball. Did anyone, did anyone see it? Anyone, maybe in their desks, anything? Any luck? Okay. All right, good luck. <laughs> um, okay. So if you go from, I, I would like to see this step. I think so. Because sometimes the angles will not be with under 45 or under 90 degrees, and I like you to use cast rule to take. You'll see, you'll see you later. Okay, please try to follow along with with what I'm doing here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. When you see the angles, whether it's an addition or a subtraction, you take a look at the ratio, whether it's sine, cos, and tangent, and just plug in where appropriate. So we're going to practice the next example with cosine. 
Question? Oh, uh, not quite. The angle that we were always dealing with was uh, 90 or 270. So that was very specific to uh, co-functions or a, AKA co-related ratios. Okay. Sorry. Can I, can I make a quick note? Um, up until yesterday, I never called this as anything other than equivalent trig expressions, AKA co-related ratios whole related ratios, their related angles, so on and so forth. Ooh, wow, just stop, stop right now. Okay, correlated angles. In the textbook, I forgot, they call these correlated functions or correlated ratios as co-functions, which makes sense because they are correlated and sine is a function, cosine is a function. So they are correlated functions. Okay, that's, I forgot that the textbook uses it that way. Uh, and so there it is. It is a little bit different from that. It still works like yesterday, but um, these are specifically, uh, what we're doing right now is investigating specifically angles of 15, 75 and 105. Okay. Like yesterday we did like one degree, 89 degrees two degrees, 88 degrees, right? This is specifically 30, 45, and 60 because we can solve it. All right, cosine 75. What combination of angles gives me 75? Okay. Wasn't supposed to be nerve wracking. 30 and 45 in whatever order you wish. Oh, okay. I have a compound angle that should ring a bell. Okay, it should be okay, right? A big exclamation mark. It should ring a bell. Knowing that this is cosine, the formula is not sine, cos, cosine. The formula is cos, cosine, sine. A, B, A, B, cos, cosine, sine. What's interesting though, is for cosine, if the angles are adding together, then the two terms we write are subtracting. If the two angles are subtracting with each other, the two terms that I write are adding. So for cosine, the signs switch. Let's do it. So cosine of 75 is cos cos, sine sine. And from there, we can use special triangles. So cos 45 degrees, that would be root two over two. Some people do one over root two, both you'll get the same answer. Cos 30 is one over two. Wait, nope, nope, root three over two. Sine 45, root 2 over 2, and sine 30, 1 over 2. So simplifying, that is a root 6 over 4. This is a root 2 over 4. And simplify, we only have this. That's it. So co 75, the exact value for that would be here. Any question? Yes. We would never, this next question, we would never get anything from the test. I will not give you 10 on the test. All right. But here in class, let's take a look at what it, what it looks like. Right. So tangent of 105. So tangent is very, very convoluted. And you could derive the formula if you wanted to, because remember, tangent of something is equal to sine over cosine. So you could technically figure that out. Do you want to? Probably not. So tangent, compound angle for a tangent is tan A plus B, one minus tan tan. 
So if it's adding, the numerator is adding the two terms. If the, the angles are subtracting, the, nu the numerator is subtracting. So let's take a look. Tangent of 105 is a result of 60 and 45. And since they are adding together, it's going to be 10 plus 10, and then one minus 10, 10. Using special triangles, 60 degrees, 60 degrees is root three over one. Yes, so root three over one. Tangent 45 is one. One minus tangent root three over one times one. What's nice is that once you have it solved, you can just copy it down. So we have, oof, root three plus one and one minus root three. So that's technically the end of the question, but uh, why do you think I wrote another equal sign underneath? Yeah? And you want to remember the trick? That's actually, actually uh, absolutely right. Anyone remember the trick to rationalizing something when it's a binomial like this? Going once, going twice. Multiply the conjugate. So if you want to rationalize, you're going to multiply this with one. Right? These two are conjugates. And this entire fraction equals one. So I'm multiplying by one, which is legal. I'm allowed to do that. Yes? What does conjugate mean? Conjugate is like two terms, right? But the signs are different. So A plus B and A minus B are conjugates. That's it. Why are we doing this? When you do so, the, because they are conjugates, when you do distributive property, the radicals will essentially disappear. It turns into a whole number or a integer. Here we go. Let me erase this. We have one times one, one, positive root three, negative root three, which is nothing, minus root three squared. That's a negative root. Ne root three times one, root three, root three times three, three, one times one, one, one times root three. My final answer is four plus two root three over negative two. I see that I can for, simplify further. There, my final answer. Surprisingly, answers for tangent uh, looks cleaner than the answers for sine and cos. Yes. The very last one? Yeah. Well, essentially, because this entire term is dividing by a negative two, what I did was four divided by negative two plus two root three divided by negative two. When you divide binomials, the entire binomial is divided. So each term is divided, essentially. And two. Well, look, two times root three divided by negative two. These two, yeah, that's a lot. Yep. Do we need to show us uh, rationalizing, or can we just? If you've done so much practice that you can go from here to here, I'm not going to stop you. That's pretty amazing. If you can do the mental math of that, that's great. Okay. Look at the angle. Check if it's 30, 45, 60. If it's not, it might be 15, 75, 105. In which case, 
We use a compound angle formula to solve even without a calculator. So, well, and how do I force you to show me? Maybe I'll say, show me all the steps to, to solving this compound angle formula, whatever. Okay. So if you see that it's a matter of just plugging in the angles, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to give you the angle as a radian. Can you do the same thing? And I hope you can. 5 pi over 12 is not a variation of this or this or this. 5 pi over 12 is not some um, equivalent fraction of this. So you have to think. For your benefit, I told, I'm telling you here that 5 pi over 12 is equivalent to 75 degrees. So what angles add up to 75 degrees? I'm not going to insult your intelligence. 45 plus 30. Okay, pop quiz, don't look at the formula. This is a sine function. What's the compound angle formula for sine? Uh, sine yeah, sine cos, cosine. What's the sine in between? What's the operation in between? Yes. For sign, it agrees with what I'm, what's written here. So what I would do, again, this is through my own practice because I've done it through blood, sweat, and tears when I was younger. Sine, cos, plus, cos, sine. I sort of just write it out. I don't even check the formula sheet because it's a waste of my time. That's how much I have practiced. I hope. Although I don't want you to shed blood, sweat, and tears. That you will get to a point where it's you can guess and when you check you're like yeah see i got it right i hope you get to that point from there let's use um special triangles sine power over four there we go times cos of pi over six that's three over two plus cos of pi over four and sine one over two. We have root six plus root two over four. Yeah. We can do B together. Can you try? Uh, actually, we could do B. We can take up B. Could you try that? Yes, question. Uh, am I able to do all this in um, degrees instead of the gradients? I feel like I have an answer. Yes, I guess so. If you want to take the time to convert this into a degree, solve it, and bring it back, I suppose you can. But I really want to encourage you to, um, at least for, during homework, to try to get used to uh, radians as fractions. Because even 7 pi over 12, right, you might not quite recognize it. As a degree. As a degree right? I want you to get used to this division or this denominator of 12. Long story short, pi over 12 is 15 degrees radians. Right? So if I have seven of them, you know what degree that is. Like I, I, I want you to keep on working with it. Five, so that would be sixty plus forty-five. Do this way. Okay. I'll give you a chat. Um, I'm gonna pause the video. Give everyone a chance to try it.